Hello there and welcome to another episode of Gotham Talk. This is episode 11 from season 1 and it's called Rogue's Gallery. Uh, kind of wish they hadn't used that title to be honest for this episode because I mean it refers to obviously all the inmates in Arkham Asylum but none that we would know of from you know from like Batman's history or future as it may as it may be um so yeah it you know when you when you think rogues gallery instantly you think of that lineup of Batman's criminals the joker two-faced scarecrow you know the whole roster of them so yeah i think that they they could have come up with a, a different title for this one but whatever so we 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 have Gotham we have um garden basically uh on the job in Arkham Asylum he's a security guard obviously his punishment uh, for, for his behavior in the last episode and yeah i i don't like being in Arkham to be honest there's a few things about it that i do but overall the just it and i think i think you're kind of meant to feel that way to to some degree because that's how Garden feels. He doesn't want to be there. It's a really, really low job. Um, it's basically a punishment, and it feels like it when you're watching it. It's it's really gloomy, and yeah, you kind of want Garden out of there. And when Bullock comes in, because uh, there's there's some dodgy dealings going on in there. Someone is electrocuting patients, uh, uh, brain damaging one, and doing some damage to another, and. Yeah, so 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 Gordon calls in Bullock, and when Bullock comes in, oh, it's like it's literally like a ray of sunshine has just walked in, which you wouldn't think with Bullock, but l love the guy in this episode. Bullock has just some of the best moments in this episode. So funny, so so funny. Um, we also get the introduction of Leslie Tompkins, played by Marina Baccarin. Um, who I really like, uh, both as an actress, but as this character. Again, she's she's someone else who, when she walks in the room, it's like a ray of sunshine. She feels ve she's a very natural presence, you know. When I when I look at some of the other performers, i.e., Barbara and uh, Montoya, I, I they, they feel a bit more like they're work like they're working really I, I feel like they're acting i can see them doing the job whereas Baccarin, she breathes it, uh, brings this very natural kind of easy presence to proceedings so the chemistry there between her and garden instantly is something i want to see more of uh speaking of Barbara and uh, Montoya, man, w when is this going to end? I, I really don't. I've said this before in previous episodes. Just Montoya is such a horrible character, the way she's been written in this show. Because she's the one who, when we when we first started the season, she was the one chasing Barbara. You know, and now that they're together, she recognizes that their relationship is damaging. So she's the one who's pushing away. And it's like, you couldn't have figured this out before you, you kind of put Barbara into this position where she now doesn't have a pot to pee in. And it's just really irresponsible and really annoying, uh, you know. And, and I've no doubt there are people like this in, in the real world. And I'm sure they're just as equally annoying. So you can't. You can't I, I guess you can't have all likable characters. But e even even some characters that you know we're, we're not meant to like, people like Fish Mooney and and, and uh, Maroney and those kind of people, they they still find some way within the scripting to make us kind of identify with them on, on some level and. With these two characters, I just can't. Um, maybe Bar Barbara more so, maybe I can identify with, just because I, f I feel like she's been given a bit of a bum deal. Um, but I also feel like, yeah, that they're dragging the heels a bit with this character. So someone who does get a real moment to shine as well is uh, Butch. Um, I, I can't remember the name of the actor. Drew, Drew something. Um, really good in this episode, I must say. Now, he really gets to show his loyalty 
Dr. Mooney in this episode. Or at least that's, that's the way it comes across anyway. Uh, Mooney is trying to obviously take over uh, Falcone's operation and she needs the, the she needs the support of the other bosses basically but there's this one guy the one who is kind of technically next in line from Falcone who the way he sees it he he's next in line so Mooney kind of has to either get rid of him or, or as as Butch suggests get him on side and and this guy is like an old friend of Butch uh, you know they've been friends since childhood so when Butch is offered by this guy to come into his operation and ditch Mooney, it genuinely looks like he's considering it. Um, you know, the, I, mean, I remember the first time I watched this way, uh, way back, it, it looked like he was genuinely considering it. But now when you see the end of the episode in which obviously you know, Butch shoots this guy, you realise that actually he, he's, not, he's not considering it. He's, he's actually he's finding it hard. Because he knows what he's got to do. He wants to be loyal to this guy. He, he he considers him like a brother. But ultimately his loyalty does lie with Mooney. So he knows that if this guy isn't going to get on side. Then he's going to have to kill him. Or somebody's going to have to kill him. And I think out of respect for this guy. He, he does it himself. Um, I, I guess you know make sure it's going to be a quick job. And not, not some torture disaster. So... Not saying there's any nobility in that. There never is if you're going to kill someone. Um, but yeah, like I, ju I just think that uh, the gu the guy who plays Butch does a really good job with it, with these moments um, and with with those final moments in particular. So yeah. Other than that, there's there's a few scenes. Uh, well, one in particular with Gordon when he gets back to the police station to help with the investigation and he's in the room with with um, Captain Essen and Bullock and that scene I really like uh, because you, you see the warmth that comes out of both Bullock and Essen towards Gordon. You can see that actually now that he's gone, they genuinely miss him. Um, you know, he, he, he caused a bit of a stir when he was there but now that he's gone, actually they realise just how valuable his his moral compasses uh, to 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 the police force. So yeah, I like that. the The whole storyline with the electrocution of the patients don't really care for all that much. Um, a bit of a reveal with one of the characters being a patient you see coming a mile off because, quite frankly, she screams patient as soon as you see this woman, um, and. Yeah, the, the the guy who plays the main villain towards the end of the episode, he, he gets away, which is a surprise, so I expect him to crop up in the future. Good performance from him, I like that actor, I've seen him in other things, but overall I just, I just don't care too much about the character, because we're not really given a right lot to go on. All we see is that this guy's a psychopath, um, but we don't really don't really get a sense of who he is, what motivates him, what makes him tick. So, yeah. Um, so that's the whole Arkham story, not too fussed about. Just like I say, a few nice character moments that come out of it. Uh, so it's a good episode, but it doesn't, you know, doesn't blow me away. I give it a three and a half out of five. But what about you? Have you seen this episode? And if so, what did you think about it? Comment below, let me know. And until next time, cracking.